Okay, y'all. So this is just a quickie. I've got a uh, older set of Cobalt Air Tools that I inherited from my father-in-law. And worked really good for me for a very long time. Kept them oiled, and then all of a sudden one day you plug the hose in to the air inlet, and it just runs on its own. You put If you press the trigger, it would kind of speed up a little bit. But it still didn't seem to have the power it used to, but it would just constantly run with the air hooked up onto it. And that's not the way it's supposed to happen. I took this thing all apart yesterday. I spent two hours pulling apart, cleaning it, cleaning all the parts inside, oiling it, greasing it. Unfortunately, I still had the manual that came with it. It has a diagram showing what it is. I don't know the model number on this. It's, I mean, it's 15, 20 years old. It's been superseded by new models. But anyway, you, you plug the air in and it just, it runs and the, the trigger doesn't do what it's supposed to do. So I did all that, put it back together and uh, still didn't fix the problem. So I gave up figuring I'm going to need to buy a new one for another 60 bucks or 100 bucks or whatever the heck it is. And then I was watching video on YouTube here. Let me get you a source on this. Repairman. He's just restoring an old impact wrench. Now these are all basically the same. They're pretty simple. They all kind of work on the same principle. And there has to be a valve because when you pull this trigger it pushes a lever down and pushes this down and compacts the spring and there's a seat I, I show you but you can't really see in there there's a seat in there and it looks like there used to be a washer in there that washer was half gone and that's why the air was getting by and that's why it was running and why the, why the trigger valve wasn't working so it looks like a round flat rubber washer So I'm going to have to find out, you know, what the bore size is of that down in there. I can assume this has been compacted over time. Looks like it's about a sixteenth of an inch. It was probably an eighth when it was new. But if I can find one of these and stick it in there, this is probably going to do the trick. And I'll get this gun working again. Which, again, save six, 60 to 100 bucks, no problem. Just wanted to throw this out here for anybody that's got the older tools don't have to throw them away. You want to take your time when you want to play with them. No problem. And again, I've got the diagram here. I could take pictures and post it up somewhere, I guess, but let's see. Here we go. Here's the handle. Here's the parts right here. There's the inlet screw. There's the exhaust port. There's the spring. There's a little piece on top, there's a pin, and there's that washer right there, number 34. They call it an oil seal. As you can see, it goes right in here, right into the bottom. So there you go. Just a little information for anybody that might be looking for it. Uh, if I can find the uh, model number on this, I'll look for it. Best I can see, it's got a KT in it, which is uh, no other model I saw listed had that on there, so that might help you out. And this is the old 350 foot-pound model. It's just got a serial number, no model number stamped on this anywhere. With the usual three forward speeds and full reverse. So there you go. Hopefully it helps somebody out. little postscript to this video. Hope you stay tuned. Ended up getting this fixed with uh, a washer that I had a bunch of them. I got a washer assortment to fix a leaky faucet a while back. And it works just fine. You need uh, one quarter size. They're going to be marked on the back. This assortment's available at Lowe's, Home Depot, and you know, any of your usual hardware stores. But just measure it. This really, the smaller one like this fits in really good. Uh, I should have used that one, but 
when I had actually had a um, rim cut in the bottom, I just ended up putting that down towards the gun side because the poppet valve comes on this side and you want it to be nice and flat to seal up. So got that wedged down in that bore. Got a nice thick pen. I even used a Phillips head to put it in there like this and just run it down into the bore nice and flat. And then just make tap it down, make sure it's flat. Put that valve and spring back in and put the bottom inlet nut back in and the quick connector for the air. And it works. One thing to look out for, this trigger. You see how it hits that? That's what presses down on this. See? This uh, pen inside this sleeve can get a little gooped up over time. I shot that really good with some WD-40 and worked it back and forth a bunch. And that worked the goop loose. And of course I hit it with some air to blow the junk out of it. It helps if you drop some oil down in there. So if you, if you still do it and it's still running a little bit, this also might be your problem. But once I got that loosened up, it's working fine. Take my finger off the trigger, trigger and it totally stops. But they are hooked up. No problem. So there you go. There's one possible fix. Um, don't know if the washers are too thick. I don't think so. They're about two millimeter thick, which is about the original of the, on this old washer, which I don't have many pieces of left. I mean, it's just falling apart. But the one piece I did have, I measured the thickness. It was one millimeter. So I figure it's reduced in size by about half over 10, 15, 20 years. So there you go. You can fix this. They're cheap. I think this whole pack cost me like three bucks when I picked them up. And they're nice to have around anyway just to fix your faucets if you have the old style with the washers. So there you go. Just want to let you know about that. Everything's working fine. Hope this helps out. Any questions, of course, as usual, just ask. If I know, I'll tell you. If I don't, I'll try to find it. And if I don't know, I'll tell you that. Thanks for watching. See ya.